Welcome back to the Third Wheel Podcast. I'm Caleb. I'm Shaps. We are here to dominate your hour. This is one, the last time we will be shooting in this here setup here. Yep. It's rearranged because I wanted to put this behind me, right? Really cool stuff, right? You know, mm. uh, check out our merch store. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. But um, we got a couple things coming up. Uh, we got one more episode, I think, after this, so Shaps has time, but we're getting ready to switch studios. Uh, for a while, we're going to be on a temporary studio basis. There's got, there's a place lined up. We're going we're gonna to be at for a little bit, and then I think eventually we'll have to switch from that too. So it's just going to be a lot of moving around, a lot of setting up, a lot of tearing down. Anyway, key takeaway from that, my life is changing drastically in the next couple of weeks here. Mm. Um, getting married. I'm excited. Getting married in a couple of weeks. So we're shooting these ahead of time and uh, trying to kind of get some episodes saved up for the honeymoon. That way I don't have to worry about... Do, uh, editing any shorts. I'm going to try to you know get ahead of the game on that. So another thing we're working on celebrity collaboration type stuff. Mm -hmm. I think we have a very good lead on someone who already has a very well established podcast. He's agreed to shoot an episode with us. That's going to be a while from now. Um, so we should record it here in the next couple of weeks. I just don't know when it's going to come out, but I'm really excited. This person has a very sizable audience. Uh, another thing, I think I'm, I don't know if I mentioned this, but we shot a commercial. Uh, we did all the work. Um, I did the, I didn't plan to do this, but I ended up being the lead actor yeah. <laughs> in it. Oh, I planned for it. Yeah, yeah, uh, he did. And he's like, dude, you need to do it. And I was like, I, I no, -uh. no, but I, I, I was sitting in the, I was sitting, you know, in the auditorium. And I, of all the boys I was looking at, I saw Caleb, <laughs> and I knew this kid's got it. This kid's <laughs> got it. Yeah. So we didn't shoot last week because uh, we were still setting up, and then, oh, I can rant about Pizza Hut a bit. I forgot about oh, this. Oh, right. I'm glad you remember <laughs> that because I didn't. Yeah. I mean, like, you were more, you were rightfully so, more, way more angry about it than I was. Yeah. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I could tell you were, you were trying to, like, it's okay, bro, chill. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, but it's no. Just <laughs> It's, no, 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 no. It's the principle of it. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to tap the camera there. Okay, here's my thing with Pizza Hut. Mm. You know, they're going downhill. Yeah. Okay. I and mean, yeah. I didn't want to believe it. Okay, they've been around a very long time. Like, yeah. there's McDonald's, which is like the founding burger company of America, right? Mm. Okay. Sure. And then Pizza Hut, when you think of food, when you think of jokes, you know, like if you want to joke about a pizza brand, the first one you're going to think of is Pizza Hut. Mm. Okay. But... Usually you'll hear people say, like, well, what's the best pizza? You know what I mean? Like, what, what's the best pizza yeah. we can do? And they'll go, oh, you know, Pizza Hut. It's, yeah. it's real greasy. It's delicious. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Despite that, mm -hmm. they're going kind of downhill. Why is that? To explain. Yeah. Well, uh, let me tell you. It's customer <laughs> service. <laughs> okay. Okay. When um, he says customer service, he's referring to one individual. One in, one, <laughs> there's one man that is responsible for the downfall of Pizza Hut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, here's what happened last week as we're getting ready to shoot our commercial. I was really excited for this, and it was like, th today's the day. I, I never, ever plan ahead. Okay. Mm. But this commercial, I actually took very seriously. Yeah. May not have seemed like it to someone like Shaps because, like, <laughs> to him, he was getting the, okay, you're ready for this day. He was kind of getting it last minute, even though I had it all planned on paper. Mm. I didn't really do great, great at sending out the invites and, like, hey, who's free this weekend? Mm. Uh, I kind of, I kind of just did a hard choice of, like, here's the day we're shooting. I at least made sure he was available because that's, that was the day we were going to just shoot a regular podcast. So mm. it wasn't like he was really doing anything else. Yeah. Well, none of the head honchos I wanted to be the actor could show, mm. so it ended up being me. And the entire time, I was on the assumption that Caleb was just going to be like, the yeah, guy. yeah. Which I had, I'm a bad actor. Okay, <laughs> I'm funny. I think I'm a good performer, mm. but I'm not a good actor. Okay, and it'll show up when this commercial comes out. <laughs> but, <clears throat> um, so, but the one thing I did do right mm. was I called Pizza Hut ahead of time and said, "Hey, I'm going to need four pizzas." ready at this time yeah okay i should have called back when i heard the guy say this so he took my order i got all that done and he's like okay so it'll be ready in the next 20 30 minutes bye and i was like okay i yeah. told i told him noon or whatever so i'm just saying noon to speed up the story mm. and i'm taking even longer explaining why i said noon um i told him I told him noon he's like sure next 20 30 minutes will be ready cool that was that you know it was still two hours before noon at the time I called it. Yeah, and he definitely was like, absolutely. Yeah, in fact, when I told him it was going to be at noon, two hours from when I called, it was like, oh, he made like a weird like acknowledgement of, okay, this is going to be later from now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
So then he forgot, I guess, mid-conversation. So, okay, next 20, 30 minutes, bye. Hangs hmm. up. I didn't think much of it. Yeah. I thought, worst case scenario, they make the pizza and they stick it in the warmer. It's in the warmer for longer than I thought. It won't be quite as fresh. Yeah. It won't be hot and ready like Little Caesars. Oh, okay? boy. Foreshadow. So I get to my place. Place is all clean. Chaps gets there early. He helps set up. We got all set up. I said, all right, guys, I'm going to go pick up the pizza. Chaps decides, hey, I'm going to tag along with you. I was like, cool. I, th- that was just the whole, that was God right there. Yeah. I, was, I don't know why. I was just like, I, I feel like something's going to happen today. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I needed it. The Lord knew I needed a witness for the story. <laughs> okay. So we get to Pizza Hut. There's already like a, not a long line, but there's people in front of us trying to place their order. Yeah. Everyone's on their phone. So I'm already annoyed that the guy's trying to take the order and he's sitting there. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. I know. I'm going to bring the money. Don't worry. You know, just someone mm-hmm. talking, not, t- not placing the order. That's taking time. Yeah. So finally, the guy looks at me. You know, and he's like, "Okay, what, what do you want?" I said, "I'm picking up an order for Caleb." And he, and <laughs> for once, he didn't look at me like I was dumb. Okay, he he said, "Oh, you're Caleb." Yeah, we canceled your order. And I was like, I'm "Sorry, what?" And he's like, "Yeah, uh, that was like two hours ago, man. Like, you, you know, you, you didn't show up, so we we canceled your order, right?" And like, you know, please correct me if I'm if I'm lying, you know mm. what I mean, or if I'm if I'm exaggerating, sure. or you know what I mean. Like, please step mm. in and give the real story. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, we canceled your order. I could definitely see like slight deterioration in your face, just like oh, yeah, ooh. yeah. Like I was like, <laughs> and, and and so he was like, uh, so, but but uh, if you give it to me now, it'll be ready in another twenty minutes. Yeah, and I was like, okay. And at first, I was like, you know, there's nothing I can do. Mm. But then, but then, it struck me. Okay. Yep. That 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 consumer attitude came in. He's like, you know what? I don't gotta take this. I said, it's a hut. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, let's go. I said it out loud too. I'm not bleeping that out. <laughs> you better, but you have to bleep that out. <laughs> and we walked out, and yep. the guy was in the back and ready to come to the front and take my order. <laughs> And we left. <laughs> and I did say that, right? I was like, let's Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> and I walked. You know, hearing it, the story now and not being in it, I think you're a psychopath. <laughs> Just what? deal with it. <laughs> People were waiting on us, you though. You ungrateful. No, well, yeah, no, no. but like our, your solution, though, no, I get it. In the moment, like I would have done the same thing, but your solution cost just as much time it wasn't about i the think time it was more point. about the pr- yeah it was more about the principle, about the principle. which <laughs> meant it cost actually more time <laughs> to prove your point your very confusing points <laughs> to no, have no, your no, order no. canceled twice <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't canceled twice he didn't put it in the system the second time he went to the back to go do something and come back to i think he was order. literally like going to put in our order <laughs> I think that's what the back was, Caleb. Because, <laughs> like, I remember thinking that in the moment. I'm like, I think he literally, like, he said, okay, let me go make it for you and left. Like, he was in, probably in the process of making it right then and there. You know what? <laughs> the way it inconvenienced him is It wasn't the way... even his fault because, like, it was the guy before him. It was the guy <laughs> on the phone who is like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, two hours from now, whatever, geez. And then, like, things. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. I got mad. We left. And then he was like, you know who <laughs> makes fast pizza? <laughs> Little Caesars. I'm like, oh, God. And he's <laughs> like, yeah, I know. We have to substitute real pizza for, you know, like, efficiency. We have to toss out quality. And I was like, well, wouldn't it take the same amount of time? And you said, no, it's hot and ready, <laughs> it, which means it will be hot and ready. I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> What? Okay, look. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were a little delirious of pure rage, pure red pizza sauce rage. Yeah. Okay. All I could see was sauce. <laughs> Some people just see red. I saw tomato sauce. Okay. Hot and red. It's not. Look, I did what I had to do. Well, okay. we got there. We put in our order for yep. Little Caesars, and yeah, it took about probably, it took about ten minutes. Yeah, okay, it wasn't twenty, but it was it was about a seven minute drive. <laughs> so it did balance out. Yeah, but Pizza Hut at that point, whether you agree or disagree, did not deserve my business. But like Little Caesars is like a punishment. That's like a punishment <laughs> that you. Took I punished on everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Look, every there's a, every good video game franchise has an arc where the character is exiled. And they have to go find themselves. Okay. okay. Little Caesars was my exile arc. <laughs> I mean, this was more like a hey, um, main character, you're just gonna have to keep grinding a few more levels. No, 
I'm going to go change factions now. But, but but that's on the other side of the map. No, I'm leaving the Brotherhood of Steel <laughs> yeah. to go join the Syndicate. I don't know what they're called. No, it's freaking the Underground Railroad, dude. Yeah, like, yeah, that, yeah, the, yeah. the most boring I faction. C- I couldn't think of them. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that's it. I'm I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, you know. So Pizza Hut for a long time, at least one by my house, will not be getting my business for quite a while. That's awkward because I really like Pizza Hut. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> now you have to choose. Yeah. <laughs> it's your friend or Pizza Hut. <laughs> mm, no, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm going to be buddies with the guy who took the order. Yeah, for real. I'm going to come in like two weeks later and be like, "Hey, man, I saw this crazy guy the other day. He was just like yelling about his order and like <laughs> ah, he didn't get it. He says." F Pizza Hut, <laughs> take off, dude. My my heart goes out for you, man. <laughs> it had look, it had to be done. Okay, <laughs> it was the principle of it. Yes, did it take just as much time to go to Little Caesars place the order? That it used to be, it used to be hot and ready, ready to go. They used to have a bunch of pizzas in the oven, ready. And and I knew you were right as you were explaining it to me, as Darcy was on the phone <laughs> telling me that I was dumb. It's going to take he, time he, to he cook. He had to call Darcy for emotional support. No, she was on the phone still. She calls me very often. Okay. <laughs> And so she was like, isn't and she she wasn't with me at all on this. Yeah. She was like, isn't it gonna take just as much time? And I was like, No, it's hot and ready. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Hot and ready. What did you not understand? Yeah. Okay, five dollars. <laughs> not anymore, but it used to be five dollars, hot and ready. When it was, you know, so those days are gone. <laughs> it's all like, right. It's mm. the point I'm trying to make. We're we're in the new period, we're in the new world order. <laughs> Okay, everything's more expensive. Houses are double in price. McDonald's isn't cheap anymore. You didn't even get like those new little pizza pocket things. That's very disappointing. Those aren't new. What? Have you not had Tostinos? <laughs> no, I guess. Yeah. I guess. Okay, pizza pockets have been a thing for the longest time. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> don't fall for the trap. <laughs> and they're cheaper at you Walmart. You did? Yeah. Hot and ready. <laughs> that used to not be a scam. That used to be the real thing. You know? <laughs> when have they ever been had just ready pizzas just on the counter? They, that's how it used to be. I they, don't remember this. Okay. Well, you didn't used to eat there that much. I guess not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, granted, I probably could have called ahead uh, as we were driving over there. He, he but was just too I was busy already, ranting. I was on, yeah, I was on the phone with Darcy. That's what it was. So, anyway. So, that, that's my Pizza Hut ramble. That was great. Um, I was very upset. And mm. I, I promised everybody quality pizza. <laughs> but so does Pizza Hut. They promise everyone a timely <laughs> service in a timely manner. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I saved $20. Okay, four pizzas at Caesars is now 40 bucks mm. with the sodas. Pizza Hut would have charged me 60 If I would have paid you $20 on the spot, would you have stayed? Maybe. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was almost worth it. It would have calmed me down. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, I stick by my decision, okay? Pizza Hut's closing down locations. They're losing money. Yeah, they he had... brings this random fact out of the nowhere. I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? You Maybe, don't know. Is it true? Like, it's are true. They actually like... Yeah. Uh, there's a Sony V2 video on it on uh-huh. how many uh, franchises are closing down. Interesting. Pizza Hut closed a lot of locations. Wow. Uh, not all of them. They're not bankrupt or anything. But And, and they're still... The guy, the one we went to, the guy was working. You know what I mean? Like he was sure. productive. He was he was taking orders. He was trying to take my order, and he was working. They were making pizzas. They, apparently, they gave my order away. So yeah. you know, canceling the order, they still had the pizza ready. So that person was yeah. like, "Holy crap! Yeah. This is the best place ever." I'll be your Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we spent the whole a lot of time on the phone talking about what a deep dish, like what kind of crust do you want? And I was like, yeah. "Well, what, what's the one that's a deep dish?" We we went into a long in depth yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. I started something. I felt betrayed. He cheated on me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So anyway, um, all right. That's it. With no more pizza. Hut. Under the episode. Okay. Yeah, for real. <laughs> so let's talk a bit about the shorts. So I, I asked you a question. It wasn't rhetorical. Mm. But it was meant to be more of like, hey, I'm looking for compliments here about our, our quality of our oh. shorts here. <laughs> and he came with a lot of notes on uh, what I'm doing wrong. Also, I'm, <laughs> I'm just a very critical person. So uh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not because I'm like, suck. <laughs> no, yeah, he didn't say you suck. He just said, yeah. I, I was like, yeah. I made a joke. I was like, yeah, there's a couple parts where I cut corners. And he pointed out a lot of stuff that seemed that was just so unnecessary. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you cut po- you cut corners on audio, you cut corners on this. I was like, that's not what I was thinking of, but okay. 
But I do. I always throw. I always try to throw in like a little nice comment. Well, what do I like about it? And then like the little little bottom, like little I, yeah. There was like, like a just a little. There was a little word in there that said smiley face. Yes. <laughs> Good. I'm having a problem with resizing because there. If you notice in the shorts now, when we put like a, when I put video yeah. or when I put pictures, I'm having trouble resizing it to where the yellow bars are there. So sometimes it'll be footage and there's no yellow bars, mm. and sometimes there will be yellow bars in the same video and it switches back and forth. And then you br- you brought up the audio, yeah. And you're saying cap cuts not the way to go. The, the, the problem is, is like <clears throat> it's so much, and I know I know it's this much work, but I try to do three a day. But it's yeah. it's so much work to use odd uh, not audacity. Um, what Premier. is it? Premiere. It's so much work to do Premiere and to click 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 click. Mm-hmm. Where on the phone you just slide cut a section. Move it over, and it's so much faster on the phone. Which is unfair. I guess a little unfair for me because like I'm so used to Premiere. Yeah, it doesn't take me a whole lot of time. That's great. (laughs) Yeah, and and it's easier when it's um, just me. Yeah. You know, because then you're just kind of cutting sound. Really, Mm -hmm. you're cutting sound. You're cutting out us and ums. Right. But when it's you know the camera's shuffling back and forth and all Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff is so much work and like oh my gosh like and I'm not a tech guy. Mm. You know, and, and like I'm getting better with Premiere. Like I hate it less mm. than I did when I first did it because it was such a learning curve from yeah. DaVinci to Premiere. Um, so yeah, and then just resizing and all that kind of stuff. Like if I if I start doing that in Premiere, it's just gonna take forever. Whereas mm. CapCut, the audio does. I, I it has to be what's up because I uh, I guess on Premiere it sounds fine, and I keep the same yeah. audio level as what we got it at yeah, now. I've, I've never had a problem like that. Like yeah. you notice on a lot of the shorts, it just sounds like it's either clipping or it's just staticky and. Uh, mm. Yeah, it's just not normal. That and uh, does it does with YouTube compressing it? Does that not? It do doesn't do to it that. It doesn't do it that bad. No, because like Facebook maybe will sometimes do that, but not YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it compresses, but like if you're not in this world, like you wouldn't notice. Mm-hmm. The same way you probably don't really notice YouTube visual compression, like on your videos and stuff. Like the quality is definitely like dipped from the raw product. Yeah. Uh, however, unless you're like so used to seeing just like what raw looks like, you're probably not going to notice the same thing with audio. Like the reason it stuck out to me is because I'm not much of an audio guy and I notice. So I'm like, if I notice, then a lot of people are going to notice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the only thing I can think of is like, let's watch it when it's raw on my phone. Yeah. And then like, if, it, if it's still that bad, I'll, have, I'll, I'll try to think of something. Mm-hmm. I was using TikTok and TikTok was a lot harder to use. CapCut's a lot more user friendly, mm-hmm. but it's a famous one people use. But I did look it up and it said like, yeah, some people said it does clip the audio. So, yeah. you know, possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so the shorts are kind of ramping up a little bit as far as uh, quality. I'd say quality. I think it's quality to cut from me talking about something and then we switch to what we're talking about. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of our shorts did so good without having to pay for an ad. Because mm-hmm. like the, some of them, our most popular shorts, the one in, that has 24K views and the other one has 12K, mm-hmm. those are ones I paid for for Google Ads to, to do impressions of mm-hmm. you know, and to like c- kind of promote. The, the one with The Rock, where I'm trashing on The Rock as a person, that did really well on its own. Mm. <laughs> you know, I didn't have to do any type of promotion on that. So if I just, you know, I'm working. I'm working. I'm trying to put uh, pictures to reference what we're talking about or video game footage or mm. movie footage. There are a couple shorts that we did I wouldn't mind remastering yeah. where, with what we're talking about. Um, it would just it's just gonna take some time. But uh the one where I'm talking about the Green Lantern ending, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm talking about the end credit scene, like that would uh, be great yeah. with footage. Like mm-hmm. I really acted it out perfectly, you know. I always uh, thought we should um if you, if we picked like one really good one, we could play we could pay um job tunes to make an animation out of it. Yeah. Like yeah. a full one. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, does he tr- he'll charge more for a full animation, right? Um, probably not any more than we Got charged for this one. I mean, I'm not sure. Maybe a little bit more, but yeah. if, for like a one minute like commission, mm-hmm. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Yeah, that's fair. He's opened up commissions for animation, so that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could do. I, I would love that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I'm very impressed with his work on our main show. Just yeah. that one minute thing he did with mm-hmm. you know the work. So right. I love it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and it, it makes it. I bet. Does it make editing easier for you? When you're with, do- with what? With just having the one minute animation he sent us. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> times better. Yeah, um, I mean, what, what I have now, I have these templates essentially that mm-hmm. I use for just in case. Um, well, when there is like video and stuff, like I have these templates already made, so it doesn't take me a whole lot longer. Like when back when back when we were like starting doing video, and I started editing some of them, 
it was hard because I didn't really know what I wanted everything to look like. So like every episode I had to change like the format because I was like, well, that didn't work. I like this, but not really this. And now that we just kind of settled, I think on the more simplistic side, um, it's easier because I can just load up this template and then like yeah. everything will already be there. Yeah. The only like time consuming part is syncing the audio, but that's not even time consuming because actually Premiere is really good at like, syncing it itself. Yeah. Um, so no, I mean like obviously it's, when it's just um, the animation, I can just let it run and do something else while I'm listening to it, and I don't have to like worry about it at all. With yeah. video, though, you never know. There might be something weird. You might you might you might call for something, you know, like for me to put in, um, and then like because there's two different camera devices, recording devices, one's usually like a phone, one's a camera, and the camera will cut out a lot more often than the phone. So it's just being more attentive essentially yeah so it's a little bit harder but like not like harder harder yeah 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 okay cool that's good to know mm-hmm. yeah i'm just kind of curious about the process now so mm-hmm. you have templates for the at night right you keep, yep, you keep that yeah and then you have one for our main show if we have a guest on mm-hmm. typically so i used i still have my old short well i got rid of it but i used to have my old shorts template as well um because like i had to get down short when i, I for a little bit i was doing shorts and the um actual show and I had to get a really a tight system down. For like a week. <coughs> Two weeks. <laughs> Two weeks. Barely. And uh, shut and, up. and half of that, there weren't even shorts being posted. <laughs> shut up. Yeah, because, because it was me developing my method. Uh-huh. And because I was like, okay, I need to figure out a way where I'm not going to burn out and get these done on time. And basically, I had I, this template I had, it was perfect. It literally was like, it probably cut down the time it took to load it up. Uh, the audio, the text, everything within like, like half the time, I was able to like get it down really well. Um, but again, that takes time, and also I'm a bit more of a perfectionist, I think. So like, it will take me a little bit more time just to get it right because I want it to be like a quality, quality product. Yeah, absolutely, and I agree. Yeah, I think you are a bit of a perfectionist in that area to a fault. Yeah, yeah, because he'll text me like, "Hey, next time can you tilt the camera up more?" <laughs> I'll be like, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> "I wish I just had your brain <laughs> so I could get it right the first time." Yeah. One thing he cannot stand is the vertical recording. He hates it. Yeah, he gets mad. He has to turn it to a square. <laughs> I really, I really don't like that because it messes yeah. with my templates. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So we did an at night episode, me and Darcy, and I was like, I almost made the same. Mistake mistake again mm. i was like okay and then maddie was setting it up for me i was like wait don't press record <laughs> perfect you do think about me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i was like Look. and you know what for you offering to do all the editing for the main episode that really helps out a lot because mm. for a while too before we had like now it's easier with the animation and with you know with other sure. stuff like now now it's a bit easier yeah and i'm learning how to do it on a, a premiere mm. so it's a bit easier now yeah. but uh, it, it did take a lot of work off my load to not have to go in through Audacity, cut mm. out the uhs and the ums, and just have you not cut them out and cut out other stuff. <laughs> so, Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, it, yeah. I cut out the long pauses, at least. That's fair. Yeah, sometimes there are a lot of those. Mm. <laughs> I can't lie. The, yeah. We don't always know what we're talking about. we got to stop for a minute and think. <laughs> also, <laughs> I don't even run it through Audacity more. I just do it all the editing in Premiere. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm mm. sure Premiere is better. Like, Audacity is the free stuff. Yeah, Premiere, you got to pay for. There's a function. I know I told you this. There's a function in Audacity. Mm. No, nope, sorry, Premiere. Mm. There's a function in Premiere where we'd have to set it up on the Rodecaster, mm. but we need it. We need to w- make it where each microphone's its own sound wave. Oh right? yeah, just split up the channels essentially. Split up the channels because uh, Premiere has an AI thing. It's an add-on plugin mm. that you use, and it will um, cut to the camera that's talking. Mm. Every time, you know what I mean, and you don't have to, uh, you don't have to manually go into Premiere and cut to e- who's talking because it does that for you now. Yeah, so. which would be helpful with shorts, but um, yeah, it wouldn't help me that much. And plus, I don't actually u- like using AI stuff. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't help you at all because um, anyway, you you put the cameras up mm-hmm. and side by side. It's yeah. not like you're cutting to who's right, talking. Exactly. We're not. We're not like this crazy professional <laughs> podcast. Maybe if this was all we did, we didn't mm-hmm. have to worry about working anymore, and this was our job. Mm-hmm. Maybe we could do a full like. Okay. Well, what I did was I when I was looking for the current look, I researched like other pod- successful podcasts, not to copy, but kind of see like what the, what's like the modern like look right now. It's very simple. Yeah. It's really just a background and then like border out cutouts of yeah. the camera shots and that's it. Yeah. Like there's not a whole lot more going on with it. 
uh, which would make sense because podcasts, you're not really supposed to be like super, like just pay attention to it the whole time. Like yeah. it's to put on the background as, you know, background noise or in your car, you know, yeah. like, yeah. so it actually makes a lot of sense. So I'm really happy with the way it looks now, but like mm. down the road, I don't know how I would improve it. Uh, I don't, I don't think we're quite there yet, but we'll have sure, to see. Sure. And you know, honestly, it's a podcast. It's not like a, mm. we're not making movies here. <laughs> we're not making a TV show. I'm not trying to, you know, push a pilot, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm, the format looks great. I'm okay mm-hmm. with the format as is like for a smaller channel. Like I think we got a very good looking, pleasant, pleasing to the eyes yeah. format, you know? We so. just, I w- Oh, that's one thing I want to make um, a really good backdrop. Mm-hmm. That's definitely something I want to do. Oh, see, so are you happy with the one we have? Backdrop meaning like in real life, like what's ever behind me. The subject. Yeah. I don't really I want like to get pipe and drape and stuff, you know, and some lighting, you know, yeah. just like. Well, when my sister moves out, I, we're going to turn that room into a studio so mm-hmm. we can actually work on that and make it, yeah. you know, make put glowy stuff behind us or yeah, behind yeah. me. Or then like, then I'll be really happy with it, yeah. I think. Because mm-hmm. now it's just whatever I have behind me, literally. Mm-hmm. For the commercial, we put up bold and brash for my scene. I love, my bold, I love bold and brash. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. it helps with views. Um, anyway, so I guess that's it on that. Um, that was a good 30 minutes already. Yeah. Uh, why are phones better cameras than cameras? <laughs> um, because big tech companies like, uh, well, let's just stick with, I mean, like Android as well, but like Apple, for instance, is because they pour pretty much 100% of their resources into these phones. Um, and they also cost a lot of money, you mm-hmm. know, so they're usually like over a thousand dollars. Um, it's just, I really think it's because they use super premium components and that's all they really do. Yeah. You know, that's all they really, like, obviously they have Macs and stuff and, you know, they're always innovating, but like the phone is their bread and butter. So they're going to make sure that that is like the best product possible. And the reason like their, their cameras are so good is because like, that's half the reason people buy phones now is because of how good the camera is. Yeah. And that's like, everyone has a phone just for the cameras. You know, everyone makes a joke. They don't even use phones for phones anymore. Um, but like TikTok, dude, Instagram, like those things have blown up and everyone uses it as a camera. Yeah. Now I will say they're not better than like high quality, um, non-consumer grade cameras, mm-hmm. you know, like DSLRs. Um, so there's like professional grade and consumer grade. For instance, the uh, A7S Mark II that we use, that's a little bit lower tier because it's a few years old, but like the new Mark IV and also like the A9 series as well as the FX3 um, would blow the phone out of the water with mm. the quality. So it's like you have to dish out a lot more money, but you can get like your picture to look better. Mm. And sometimes you can tell if it's a phone. Like we're so used to seeing phones. Like I could look at two images and probably tell you if it's a phone or not. Yeah. Um, I remember I just did a project actually, a video project, and it was combination between my personal camera and two phones. And I could tell, I was like, yeah, there's a little bit of a quality dip with the phone. Mm. I mean, you could shoot a movie on a phone. Sure. nowadays yeah there's a movie called tangerine that was shot on the iphone mm-hmm. yeah that was a whole selling point like they do look good but they also have to be under like the right circumstances um sony cameras are really good at shooting in low light like not other cameras are really good at that mm-hmm. so like it does pay it does pay like there's advantages and disadvantages to both but yeah. if you're just like a regular joe and you don't really care that much about like the quality then yeah just get a phone yeah to film your stuff for sure <laughs> Funny story before we get our t- to our main topic for the day. Mm. I finally, after, uh, as, as South Park would put it, navigating the American healthcare system, mm. uh, have managed to secure a CPAP sleep machine. Okay, wow. took six months. Are you familiar with them at all? A sleep machine? Yeah. Uh, C- no. CPAP. Uh, so basically, my sleep is really bad, mm. which I told you this. Like, uh, I stopped breathing. I took a sleep test, and they said, uh, your results are you stop breathing 17 times an hour. At night, hmm. at night you flat out just do not breathe. So, wow. so I'll be asleep and I'll quit breathing, and then I'll wait. I'll wake up and then fall back asleep, and I don't get REM sleep, hmm. no deep sleep because of that because I'm not breathing. Wow. So, uh, 17 times an hour. That's quite a bit. That's moderate, moderate sleep apnea. Hmm. So they have machines now. They're really quiet. I uh, turned it on and I put the mask on. But when you turn it on, it sounds like a gentle guy ble- breathing. Sorry, breathing hmm. through a straw. 
So that's what it sounds like. Very, very gentle. Mm. They used to sound louder than snoring. Okay. Mm. So uh, we're getting our machine. It's me and this other guy. They did it a bunch of us at once. Why well, I say a bunch, just two, me and another guy. They're not going to set both out. Yeah. We're getting our machines. I'm asking all these questions like, okay, so here's how it goes on. And uh, she, and then, uh, so what about when I r- move around a lot in my sleep? Mm. And then she's like, oh, with this, you don't move around anymore because you're not, you're, you're, you're breathing, you know? So the machine, it, uh, you have the machine, you turn it on, you put your mask on, you connect the hose to it. Mm. It pushes air down your throat when you stop breathing. So mm. when you when you stop breathing, it's, shoo, it keeps your airway open. So you're, you're getting the oxygen to your brain. People that don't treat this uh, are tired throughout the day. Mm. They have headaches because they got no oxygen in the brain, and they don't get deep sleep. Mm. And there's a bunch of other stuff, too. It actually uh, can cause strokes. It can cause heart attacks, higher blood pressure. Mm. Uh, It can lower your libido. Uh, A lot of stuff that Americans suffer with can be traced back to sleep apnea. A lot Mm. of people don't know they have it until they go get treated for it. A lot of people don't know that they're not actually getting sleep when they sleep. I could wow. s- before the machine, I could sleep for nine hours and not feel any better. Mm-hmm. I felt like I, I didn't even sleep for five minutes. Yeah. Um, so I'm still getting adjusted to it. So uh, the first night, I put it on. It is it is a different adjustment. Adjustment. Uh, I was at first. I was like, I, I can get through this. Mm-hmm. This isn't going to hurt me at all. Uh, so I put it on, and it's it's. I had it on really tight. Tighter than it should have been, but it's even when I loosened it up, it's still pretty tight. Mm. And I couldn't fall asleep that first night. Mm. I had it on. It's pushing air in my face, and I didn't. Uh, it sealed. It like suctions mm. to your face, but at one point it unsealed, so it was doing like a weird whistle, and, mm. and you know, so <clears throat> I had to turn it off because if you try to adjust it while it's still on, it's blowing air in your yeah. face really hard. So. Um, so then t- last night, this past night, I was like, okay, I, I didn't sleep last night because I didn't fall asleep because it was so uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So I was like, tonight, I'm so tired because I stayed up all night. I'm going to fall asleep. I'm, I'm getting the sleep in, gosh darn it, no mm-hmm. matter what. Yeah. Okay. And so then I, I put it on, I turned to the side, and then I fell asleep. I woke up at 5 a.m., and the mask was on the floor. <laughs> okay, now, the thing about the mask I have... yeah is that it is very secure. Mm. You can only... it. The, what, I, what I'm trying to say, there's no chance it would fall off. Yeah. Okay, it's very secure. It has magnets that you wrap around your face and you put the magnets in. Mm. No matter how much you shake it, no matter how much you're moving around, yeah. it's not going to come off unless you manually take it off. So imagine my surprise when I wake up at 5 a.m. and the machine's on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> the mask is nowhere to be found. So I was like, "What the heck? What, what happened? Like, yeah. I know it, it didn't fall off. It's secure, right? Right. So I must have subcon- subconsciously, like in sleep, like you know, people sleepwalk. I must yeah. have woken up, woken up, because I don't remember taking it off and thrown it because I was like, I can't do this. But I don't, I don't remember that. So I must have subconsciously, like, did I hate feel, this. Did you feel refreshed? <laughs> no, because uh, the the machine tracks how long you wore it. So oh. I was like, okay. So I was like, okay, maybe." Maybe I slept four hours, and I was like, "Okay, so when did I, um, when did I take this off?" It says I only had it on for an hour, so I must have had it on for an hour and decided while I was sleeping. Do you live? You live with people, don't you? Yeah. Does it make noise? No. Remember, it's, like, are you? You're certain it doesn't make any external noise, like for people or like around nope. you. People all. told me I can't hear it, and they're wow. like, "Is it even on?" I was like, "Yeah, it's on," because it's it's next to my ear, so I hear. But after an hour, that's hard to believe. Like, I could see that after, like, five hours of sleeping. Right. You would subconsciously just, like, throw it off. But, like, after an hour? It's hard to get used to breathing through a tiny mask. So, and, and it's still, it was still kind of tied on my face, mm-hmm. right? So, I must have been, like, so I must at some point while I was trying to sleep, I must have just gotten sick of it mm. and just popped it off. Cause are, are you, were you saying somebody took it off me while I was sleeping? Yeah. No. No. No way. Uh, cause, um, if you don't know how to do it, you don't, you're not mm. gonna be able to take it off. Cause it, you gotta take the magnets off. You gotta unstrap it. You gotta do all that. There's no way I could, they could have done that without me noticing. That sounds <laughs> so involved. I don't know if I could be able to sleep with that either. Mm-hmm. Like that's just a lot. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, luckily today's Saturday. So I woke up at five. I played Mortal Kombat for a bit. I'm trying to unlock Homelander's second fatality. Of Unlocked course. his white costume. And uh, I decided at seven, I was like, I'm, I'm still really tired, and we got a podcast to shoot yeah. coming up. So I went back to bed. I slept for another three hours. Mm. Uh, and then, so I feel better. Um, so, you know, I'm hoping tonight. <laughs> oh, today was the day. Today was the day. You I found wa- the machine I w- on the floor. Yeah. 
Wow. This morning. This morning I woke up and it was on the floor. I was like, Who, uh, what did I do last night? Oh, oh God. <laughs> I did the Omni Man when he got done punching Mark. <laughs> there's, just, there's just bottles on the floor. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just <laughs> it's like, what did I do? <laughs> so I'm glad uh, I got it before the honeymoon because I want to be adjusted to it before sure. it's time to get married yeah. and go on the honeymoon. You know, I want to be sure I'm well rested and stuff. So I'm glad that's done. So cool. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm adjusting to it now. A lot of people said it took two or three weeks. I guess I just have like super sleep apnea because I like I decided in my dream, in my sleepwalking state to be like, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I used to have insomnia really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually don't. I don't really have problems sleeping now unless it's like one of those accidental. Oh, crap. It's 1 a.m. And I got to wake up in a few hours. Then I can only think about waking up and yeah. I never get to sleep. Yeah. yeah maybe. Uh, but usually like I don't have a problem falling asleep now. But I used to when I was younger. Oh, my mm-hmm. gosh. I never slept. I mean, it, it could also be, did you, like, fall asleep at 5 and wake up at 3 p.m. or something like that? No, I don't do that anymore. But, the, but were, you, were you doing that? When I was younger, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. all the freaking time. It, you know, maybe I, I, I'm no doctor here, but, like, I used to have that problem, too, and it was more so, like, I just didn't get myself on a good sleep schedule. Yeah. You know? Nowadays, like, generally, yeah. I don't have a problem falling asleep. It's just getting to bed. I'm, like, I'm very much a night owl so yeah. it's very hard for me to go to sleep early but well so I, I used to be a night owl and now it's like now i'm getting now i was tired before this machine at like 6 p.m yeah. and i was like i need help like mm-hmm. this isn't normal for me because i'm a night owl too but i'm yeah. like why am i tired already mm-hmm. 6 p.m you know so and it's because of sleep apnea so anyway yeah. getting it treated finally mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm excited I'm, I'm finally gonna be a normal person <laughs> so <laughs> that was all yeah. He won't be yelling at the Pizza Hut people. That's, That's right. what happens. I'll be, you know, if I could go back in time <laughs> with a well-rested me. You have the little mask machine. <laughs> yeah. A <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. If I could take me now, mm. having slept finally, and go into Pizza Hut and be, in, and be like, you know, replace the tired me mm-hmm. with the less grumpy me. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the shabby me. The, the, the guy I am today. Not the mm. guy I was a week ago. Yeah. But the guy I am today, uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. I don't think anything would change. <laughs> I think I'd still be anti Pizza Hut guy. Sure. All right, main topic for today. We finally got around to it. Nice. God, chaps, you ramble on so much sometimes. Jeez. <laughs> All right, movie pass. We are back on this subject. Episode five of the original Third Wheel podcast before it was new and improved. <laughs> before we finally maxed out yeah. and sold out our souls for an extra two hundred <laughs> subscribers. Yeah. Um, we talked about Movie Pass, about its rise and fall, but we did it from the perspective of the consumer. Mm. Me being the consumer, you see, when it came out, I was subscribed to Movie Pass. Yeah. Okay. I was a partaker in it. So, Movie Pass, if you weren't familiar with or if you haven't watched our show before, uh, but if you have, cool, good to see you again. Glad you uh-huh. made it this far. But uh, episode five, Movie Pass, there's a, a movie service where they send you a full on <laughs> Visa card. You paid ten bucks a month, and you go. You could watch a movie a day. No, I'm sorry. It was ten bucks a month, and you could. Uh, it was originally unlimited. You watch as many movies as you want, yeah. and then eventually they restricted it to three times a day, and it was going downhill from there. The way they had structured it made zero sense, mm-hmm. right? And it, it made made no money. They went, they filed for bankruptcy, and and then uh, anyway, it was a whole thing. It was a whole scam too. Okay, yeah. um, so it's back. The, and the reason we talked about it was because it had come back. Mm. The The original guy, Stacy Spikes, had purchased Movie Pass from the guys who had... For a while, he stepped away from it, but he didn't explain why. Mm-hmm. And he stepped away from Movie Pass as a CEO. He stepped down. Yeah. And it was replaced by Mitch Lowe and Ted Farnsworth. They were the two... They were the guys, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And a documentary came out that detailed the whole debacle. Mm-hmm. And... Other than what happened to the CEO and from his perspective, Mm -hmm. there wasn't too much that I didn't already know about the thing. And I feel like our episode kind of covered it pretty well, other than me forgetting the exact timeline Mm -hmm. of when things took down and and, and what policies they changed on the spot. Like, yeah, yeah, I I had to go based off a memory on that. I didn't actually have it all written down for a podcast I was going to write four years later. You know what I mean? I just didn't have all that ready. But a documentary came out, and it's about the rise and fall of Movie Pass, and it, they they talked to surprisingly Mitch Lowe, the guy that ran it into the ground, mm-hmm. hopped on, yeah, and was pleading his case for it. Mm-hmm. So Mitch Lowe he replaced Stacy Spikes, and he actually kicked Stacy Spikes out of the company essentially. Yeah. Um, so Shaps and I watched it separately, but he he did watch it, and mm-hmm. I watched it finally, and we find and I'm ready to like talk about it. So. Mm-hmm. 
Stacy Spike started Movie Pass, and he has so much trouble getting it off the ground. Yeah. Okay. And he's in the documentary. He's like the main one of the main characters in it with his friend. Yeah, his he started with his buddy Hammett Watt, mm. and they were struggling. They tried to at first they launched it in AMC. That it you could uh, use their service through AMC, and that was like their big ticket in. And then for some reason AMC decided, uh, yeah, hey, they uh, weren't making enough money. Well, before that, uh, the uh, AMC had basically um, told them sent them a cease and desist, like, yeah. hey, you can't run your business through us right now. So then they had to go back to square one. They, they, it, was, it wasn't even Movie Pass yet. It was called like a Movie Ticket yeah. or Box Office, something like that, uh, dot com. And you could buy your ticket through them. And that was their original business plan. Mm. It wasn't making great money. And then they got in with the uh, CEO of AMC. And he was like, yeah, he was all for Movie Pass. He's like, this is a great idea. So, so uh, back then, I think it was 2011. You could get one movie ticket a day mm-hmm. if you subscribe for like thirty bucks a month or four. It was a reasonable price to where yeah. it would offset the co- it would offset the cost, right? And so uh, the, the the original CEO owner or or C, uh, CEO of AMC was like, uh, yeah, let, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and and he was on board. He met with Stacy Spikes and Hammett Watt. Uh, now both of them, when I'm watching the documentary, you could tell, like, yeah, they're they're reputable businessmen, and they wanted to do it right, and they they mm. had a realistic goal they were setting for themselves. Yeah. But, um, did you get the impression Stacy was very like, uh, shy, or wasn't as like he wasn't he was a good business guy, but he wasn't big on like pitching. He wasn't big on like. I don't think he's actually like as good as a businessman as like yeah he needed to be, which is why they originally wanted to get another CEO. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I did. Kind yeah, of. and so he AMC was on board, mm-hmm. but then the CEO decided he was going to retire, kind yeah. of out of nowhere, before their business deal was finalized. And so um, he said, uh, "So they were back to square one." AMC was in, and then the new CEO came in, and he's he just wasn't having. He's like, "Nah, movie pass. That's really not where we're going. Mm-hmm. Everyone's streaming now." Yeah. You know, I, I pictured like just this kid who's like, you know, got his feet up on the desk, and he's like, "Yeah." No, <laughs> I don't like that. Mm. Doesn't make sense to me. So they're back to square one, and so they didn't know what to do. So then their head investor was like, "Hey, we need to bring in a new CEO," and it wasn't to replace Stacy or Hammett. They were like, you know, "Like we need a new guy that's going to come in and kind of help us, like go back to the drawing board." And, uh, he said, "We need to bring in a new guy, someone who can actually help us." Yeah. And this was their main investor. He said, if we can't do that, if we don't see a radical change or shake up, yeah. we're, I'm, I'm going to have to pull out. Because you know? mm. he's losing money at this point. Like yeah. anybody, who, you know, and he wasn't asking for much, at least at the time. Mm. I, I just wish he did a better background check on who he brought in. Sure. But he was like, at, at, at the time, I, I can't really blame the guy because he's like, look, look, like it's not working. Mm. Nobody's buying. Um, so Stacy, I can see where he's coming from. He starts saying like, hey, uh, it's cut. Co- I mean, here's what he, he pulls a race card. He says, mm. like, it's because we're black. We we couldn't get any good investors. Yeah, I see where he's coming from. I also I also kind of think that, like you said, he just wasn't very good at pitching. He yeah. wasn't a good business guy. I, like he had a. It, it wasn't. It, the business was failing because nobody would invest. Nobody yeah. would pitch in and believe in the project. So they hire Mitch Lowe, the investor. They they pick Mitch Lowe. What he didn't do was he didn't, like, do a background check on him. Yeah. He used to work at, uh, where did he used to work before Movie Pass? Uh, Netflix. Yeah. He was, like, a big thing into Netflix. He claimed he was, like, an he cl- executive. Yeah. He claimed he was a big executive in Netflix. Mm. He was the reason Netflix got off the ground. VP, I think. Like yeah. Crazy, crazy. Thing. Yeah, crazy like, claims. It probably <laughs> takes five seconds to do a Google search. Exactly. You know? To know, like, oh, he served popcorn at Netflix premieres. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. they bring in Mitch Lowe, this, and it's a white guy. Mm. Well, suddenly they're getting all these investors. Yeah. So I understand why Stacy's like, hey, he pulled the race card. He's like, it's because I'm black and nobody wants to support the brothers. Like, I get why he felt that way. Because as soon as they hire the white guy, mm. Mitch Lowe, people start investing, you yeah. know. And but Mitch Lowe was good at pitching. He was good at. He also had connections. Yes. Yes. Crazy. Like he was kind of well known. So like he just had that. Like it was co- so. The do- just so you know, the documentary does take that story and run with it. Absolutely. Um. I don't know how much is like sort of not fabricated, but like exaggerated rather than truth. Cause like, it's very easy to say, Oh, it's just like the black and white thing. Yeah. 
I don't know. I wasn't in any of the meetings. Obviously, no right. one was. You right. know, and like you were like you're like you're right. Like they doesn't sound like they were super. Like it's their first biz, big business. Yeah, but like they didn't have the knowledge. They didn't do the research. You know, so like they kind of got taken advantage of because of their lack of just ability to step back and say, well, are we actually making the right decision? I think they were just kind of desperate for success yeah. in that instance. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, if you watch the documentary, there's two things I noticed about it. One, that's the story. That's the narrative, at least. Yeah. And that is, it runs it as if that's the narrative, whether or not that's true. Sure. And second, it's less about the failure of Movie Pass and more about um, Stacy's story. Yeah, I will say very much so. so. Mm-hmm. Stacy's story and the downfall is like the very la- like the very end. Yeah, like for like ten minutes maybe. And I wish they went into more detail about what he's doing for the company now. Yeah, I was really interested in that. That was the last three minutes of the well, documentary. Well, I never. They never really went into what he did for the company that whole time. Like Stacy or Mitch. Stacy. Yeah. Like he, they was very much like Stacy's kind of pictured as like this sort of like holy messiah that like oh if only he was the one who was calling the shots but who knows like there may have been some mistakes that he made you know that they uh, i'm it, sure it didn't touch on it like at all yeah yeah, yeah. It very much demonized these two guys now these guys are pretty scummy from what it they seems were. like they, yeah <laughs> and i remember this so they they talked about this when mitch was on suddenly they're getting investors yeah. and like i said he had connections so he had stuff he he, he could pull from yeah it didn't get really crazy bad though until they hired Ted Farnsworth as another CEO. Yeah. So Farnsworth, he was in all the interviews with Mitch. Mm-hmm. Now Mitch did a lot of stuff on his own where he's like, "Yeah, bro, we're doing great," and they're like, yeah. "Well, well, how are you doing great? It's ten bucks a month, and everyone's you know everyone's watching Movie Pass eighty times a day. How are you sure. making money? Ah, we're making money. Yeah. You know, like I, yeah, he did all that. That mm-hmm. was him. Well, Ted Farnsworth hopped on a bunch of interviews too, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we're fine. We're selling the data." He was the biggest scammer. Oh, yeah. So he had a history. This is what's weird to me. He had a history of getting people to invest in a company and then just running away with all the investments. Yeah. He did that a lot. Mm-hmm. He And he dipped into every industry. He had like a... He had a candle. I think it was candle or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had like a candle business where yeah. he got everybody to invest and he ran off with money. He had a he had a weird version of Prime. Yeah, he got everyone to invest in that, like the drink. He mm-hmm. was in the drink business and then he got everybody to invest in that and he ran off with the money. Yep. Another thing that he would do, Farnsworth, is he would create websites <laughs> dedicated to reporters to write articles about him, mm-hmm. addressing whether or not he was a scam artist. You remember that section where somebody was looking through an article, like, is Ted Farnsworth a scammer? Uh And they were like, no, he's done all these businesses. He's a very reputable person. So he paid people to say nice things about him. Then there were whole websites dedicated to, like, is Ted Farnsworth a scammer? And then, you know, none of us were asking these questions. (laughs) Like, is Ted, that Ted Farnsworth, we're going to do an episode on him. (laughs) I think that's like, that. no, that's crazy. You know why? Why? I think it's actually smart because you're getting ahead of the narrative. Mm Mm-hmm. You're getting there before people can make the stories about you, and you don't have control of those stories. Mm -hmm. He made that happen so that he could control the narrative, like. But 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 until this documentary came out, the questions (laughs) were going to come. No, he's used to that, right? Uh The questions are going to come no matter what. There's no stopping people from tracking him down and realizing who he is. So if he gets ahead of the game, and makes a website dedicated like, oh, is this guy or Arco, whatever? This guy is scammer, and then pays people to say, no, he's not. These are all credible things he's done, like. That means he's controlling the narrative before the major media outlets mm-hmm. can. So actually, I, I I can see the longevity of that. Well, everybody saw right through it. <laughs> at least I, mm-hmm. at least you know. Well, com- did they though? In the uh, in the moment. Yeah, but like he wasn't a big enough name to mm-hmm. where people were actually actually questioning whether or not he was a scammer. That, I think the only time people thing. were really questioning is during the interviews, like the actual like on air interviews, Perhaps. where he didn't have any answers. Sure. The only thing he ran with was the fr- was the selling the data. Yeah. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. We are. We are. So back back backwards a bit. Uh, so Mitch Lowe comes on. They also get Ted Farnsworth. They yeah. don't really talk about wh- where this idea came from, but they were told by big investors, "Hey, you need this X amount of subscriber count. You need like it was it was like thirty thousand. It was because no, it was because I think it was actually Ted. He originally was an investor, mm. and he said, I won't invest. I will give you millions and millions and millions, but I will not give you this unless you hit this many subscribers. Mm-hmm. And so that basically poised MoviePass to do something more drastic. which Very was Very radical. Yeah, the promotional, uh, the promotional quote-unquote, 
uh, module where it was 10 bucks a month. That ten, was just to accumulate bucks. subscribers yeah. and then to keep the ones they have afterwards by going to like $15 a month. You would lose some people, but you would keep the majority. That was yep. the plan. Yep. And then it blew up so hot. Like it, it, it actually grew too fast for them. Yep. It grew way too fast for them. And I think that's when – I don't think Ted was ever the CEO. I think he was just the investor. Sure. He became as like the prime investor. Mm -hmm. But then, I see, Admittedly, I needed to rewatch it before doing this. But then <laughs> Ted and the current CEO, the, one they, the other guy they hired, they sort of like – took over they yep. they were on the board and they yep. basically kicked stacy out of the yep. board so 2017 comes around mm. i remember this very specifically movie pass announces 10 bucks a month yep. unlimited films yep so like you said it, it grew too fast mm. not only did they reach that milestone subscriber count they needed but they it went they way, like doubled it yeah, yeah it was ridiculous so they had so many more subscribers they literally had problems sending up they had no they didn't have enough cards no he said like they had like five thousand cards ready yeah. to go when they did that they sold out immediately yeah. and they were so I, I i told you in that episode episode five go check it out greatest show in the world uh when I ordered it, they sent out an automatic reply email saying, hey, we're behind on cards. <laughs> they had it ready for me. Yeah. And it took about a month or two before I actually got my card yeah. because they were so backed up. It was mm -hmm. like they had, and these were full on Visa cards. These weren't like a plastic, like a, a, a paper mache, like, yeah. just show this to them and you get your card. No, it was a full on like Visa card. Sure. And I think eventually they were hoping to branch out to like, hey, you can use that card as a credit service. You know what I mean? I think yeah, that's yeah. what they were trying to go for. So, you each got your movie pass visa card and it worked. Mm -hmm. It was like I, if I wanted to watch it in the morning and then I wanted to and I wanted to go with some friends later in the evening, I could do that. I could watch three movies a day. And I did that for a little bit. Yeah. I watched Thor like seven times in theaters. Less than the price of an actual ticket. Absolutely. Ten bucks a month. I swiped that card, I got a ticket. And mm -hmm. if I wanted to go later, again, swipe the card. It didn't cost me anything more. It was ten bucks a month. Unlimited yeah. films. It worked. Mm -hmm. What didn't make sense was on MoviePass's end, they were having to cover the difference. Yeah. So if AMC was charging fifteen dollars a ticket, uh, <clears throat> they had to make they had to pay the difference. Yeah. So anytime someone swiped the card, it was actually thirty. It cost them thirty bucks. It cost me ten bucks a month. Mm -hmm. It cost them thirty bucks per swipe. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. It cost them thirty bucks per swipe. Mm -hmm. And what they really did a good job highlighting, they brought in a bunch of people that used MoviePass at its peak, yeah. and I use that in quotes because they were really losing money, hemorrhaging money, sure. um, was like, yeah, I use that thing like six or seven times a day. And yeah. then they, they had a guy, they, they brought in the biggest nerd, he brought his own popcorn buckets for this interview. Yeah. He's like, I use that thing seven times a day. And they, like, they were finding, they were, they were hoping that uh, people would just do it once, once right. a week, stuff like that. No, this guy was like, yeah, I, I took the, I, I, you know, I abused it, like, yeah. you know, like... I saw seven movies a day, and so with that seven, uh, they were saying like it was co it was costing Movie Pass on there and like thirty bucks per swipe. Mm. So you, you got one guy watching movies seven times a day. That's thirty bucks per spend on them, and he only paid ten bucks a month. He's set. So everybody who bought a card is using it multiple times per day, and they were having issues everywhere. They're having people. Uh, Swiping the card, getting a ticket for a showtime, yeah. and then selling it. They were having problems with that. So I remember when we got the email saying, hey, we changed it to three times a day instead of infinite. Mm -hmm. And then they, 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 and they kept changing their policy as they went. And so uh, they got the subscriber count, but they were losing money mm -hmm. out the wazoo, hemorrhaging funds. I don't think they ever changed the price point. No. No, they didn't. Um, so what they were doing... So Stacy's like, oh my God, I don't know what we're gonna do. Yeah. And so he was like, Hey, uh, we need to raise the price. Mm -hmm. We need to go in there, we need to change it to like twenty bucks or thirty, you know, thirty bucks a month, something like that. And Mitch Lowe was like, Nah, you're fine. Mm -hmm. And I remember those interviews where they were asking, I, I remember this as it was happening, they were asking Mitch Lowe, like, uh, okay, so what are y'all what are y'all doing to and he's like, Ah, it makes sense to me. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about it. You know, that's what he did. So so Stacy goes to Mitch and he's like, Hey, this isn't gonna. Ha we're gonna we're gonna go bankrupt in like a month or two. Yeah. And he's like, uh, "Ah, you're just being a party pooper." You know what I mean? They're throwing parties at the Movie Pass uh, headquarters. Yeah, they're spending a lot of on money. nothing mm -hmm. on parties. Like Mitch Lowe gets to stand there with all these models, and he pops the cork, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Yeah," you know. And everyone's cheering. He's probably sleeping with hookers all the time. Yeah. They, they didn't touch on that documentary, but I, Mitch, I know people like you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, he's like, you know, party pooper. And then Ted, Ted's the same way. Anytime yeah. they interviewed Ted Farnsworth, 
He's like, oh, well, the, we're selling the data. We're selling the data from our members. So we're collecting data, what movies they go see, what their spending habits are, yeah. and we're selling that to people. And they said that they had like an actual partnership with AMC, but I don't think the partnership ever AMC happened. hated them. Yeah. I remember that, too, because AMC started their own movie pass version mm-hmm. where it was more realistic. It yeah. was like 20 bucks a month, four movies a month, yeah. you know, something like that. They, they, they had their own – because they, they – <laughs> I don't think AMC knew how much they were losing money because they were trying to compete with them. Right. So they had their own version of Movie Pass. I don't think it's a thing anymore. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, they were trying to compete with them to get people to stop using it. Yeah. And AMC was mad because they were losing money when everyone used Movie Pass. I don't remember how that worked, but AMC was very stressed with them. Yeah. So yeah, they never they didn't. But they have, were saying, "Oh yeah, we have this partnership lined up." They like they lied. Are you actually like partners with them? Oh yeah, we have it lined up. Yep. And the data that's enough to sell. But it's like. I think even the documentary they, they touched on, it's like the amount you of data you would have to sell yes. to offset this cost, like it's impossible because you actually don't make as much as you think yeah. because these companies, these tech companies that sell people's data are selling billions of people's data, mm-hmm. you know, like not just like the few, the few, not the 500,000 subscriber. Yeah, account exactly. It's not enough no. money. Now it's just like the, in a perfect world, that sounds smart, right? But right. it actually just wasn't working. Yeah. I don't even think they were selling the data at that time. They no. were just saying how they were going to. And the, the data they were selling wasn't worth that much. I yeah. remember they were saying like per 30 people, it was like six bucks yeah, exactly. worth of data. Mm-hmm. So they were, they were just lying through their teeth. And that, that's because what Ted would do. In that <laughs> moment, Ted was like, I already know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use up as much money as I can, live yes. life, and then run. And he was posting pictures on Instagram on yachts. And, and Mitch, uh, even at one point, Mitch, because... Mitch was working real close with Ted Farnsworth, yeah. and even he didn't know what was going on. He was just like, you know, he he took a helicopter to his right. mansion. He took a helicopter to the he's party. He's very much like the friend. He's like, oh, I just want to hang out with the cool guy. Yeah, like yeah. And Ted was the cool guy. I, I'm gonna trust him. I'm gonna yeah. trust him. Yeah. He didn't even know what was going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now he's the one. Now, so at the end, they talk about Ted and Mitch. They're under investigation for what the how the comp- what happened to the money. Where's all the yeah. money at? Right. So we don't. Their their cases are still pending. You know, and, and all subjects in this podcast are innocent till proven guilty in the court of law. <laughs> Allegedly, mm-hmm. they stole a bunch of money. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, at this point, I believe it's when the two founders were fired. Yeah. So Stacy, Stacy's coming in. He's like, mm-hmm. "This doesn't make sense. What, what's going on?" We're, and he has his money is in the company invested. The stock. Yeah. Yeah. The stock, and he couldn't withdraw the money with about eighty million dollars worth each, I believe. Mm-hmm. But there was a clause that they couldn't withdraw with um, within a year. Mm-hmm. That they had to wait a year. And so they're waiting, and they're, they're like, "Well, this company is die if it dies, it's going to die six within months, the year. It's going to be know, worthless. We're going to lose the money." You know, yeah. so they weren't allowed to withdraw. So they're sitting there, and the, and and Stacy was literally praying. He's like, "Maybe mm-hmm. they have an ace in their, you know, they have a rabbit. They're yeah. going to pull out of the hat. Maybe there's something we don't know." And no, that they <laughs> they had as much faith in the company as I had in the company. Yeah. Like, and I I was just a guy who bought the the card and was mm-hmm. like, "This doesn't make any sense." Now they touched on this too. Uh, movie Pass tried to dip their toe in the movie industry, mm-hmm. and not not just selling t- tickets. They tried to make movies, so they made a movie called uh, Gotti with John Travolta, and yeah. it's supposed to be about John Gotti, the mobster. Mm-hmm. Well, it came out to a zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes, um, and this is where I think I think Ted Farnsworth did this ad. He didn't. They, they did an ad. Movie Pass yeah. allegedly. I, my theory is Ted Farnsworth. Allegedly, a movie pass they didn't add where they said the critics don't want you to watch this movie. Why? Oh, yeah, go go watch it for yourself and see. Don't listen to a troll behind the keyboard. It was a it was a that was their ad for Gotti. Mm-hmm. But it was run in the same vein as one of Ted Farnsworth's fake articles. Well, who are these people accusing Ted of being a scammer? Mm-hmm. Well, f- you know, you need to learn who he is for yourself. Yeah. Invest in his company. You know what I mean? It's the same. I was like, that has to have been a Ted Farnsworth production right there if I've mm-hmm. ever seen one. <laughs> so they're at, at a point in the documentary, they're out of money. They need $5 million to stay afloat. He yeah. tech, Ted, Ted's not returning his calls. He ain't returning his texts. And he's like, hey, we need $5 million in like two or three days or we're, we're done as a company. Yeah. And then Ted texts him at 11.59 p.m. the day before it's due and says, like, yeah, we don't have I, we don't have it. Yeah. At the same time, Ted's posting photos of his yacht. Mm. He's posting he's on a boat that's not even in sea yet. Yeah. He's just chilling on a yacht, and he's, he's living it up. He did what he'd always done, which is take the money. And that's where I was like, I don't understand how nobody did a quick... Well, I guess a Google search wouldn't have helped on Ted because it would have pulled up those fake articles. It's because, right? honestly... 
it was such a small, small company. Yeah. And it like grew way too fast for its yeah. own good. That didn't have any data or research yep. or actual experienced executives. It was just basically two guys in the basement mm -hmm. who hired, you know, this one CEO who really didn't know what he was doing either. Right. Um so they just kind of trust that whoever they put in that role, whoever invested, they just knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't have the experience. Yeah, I hope Stacy has the experience now. I'm sure he does. Yeah, um, but yeah, I don't know how well it's doing now. But like, yeah, right. that's that has to be it. Like it was just too small of a company to be what it was. Mm -hmm. It grew way too fast yeah. for its own good. So it's a documentary in a nutshell. So Stacy's back in charge of uh, Movie Pass. Um, I don't know if Hammett Watts in it anymore. No, he's not. Right, he's investing in other. He is investing in like um, small companies being started by um, people of color. Yeah, so good for him. Yeah, you know more power to that. I I, I, re I really do wish him luck. Uh, Stacy, I would love. I, I if you have an account like on X or something, yeah. I, I might tweet this episode or put some clips together, kind of yeah. asking like, I would love to talk with you at some point, or maybe tweet back at me and just be like, hey, that you know with some insight into something, but I want to talk about movie pass now. Well, that's the thing I was about working. to say is that when it was a thing, it was a phenomenon. Like yeah. you couldn't meet two people without movie pass. Right. Nowadays it's back, but I'm like, I don't know anyone who uses it. Right. So I don't know what the model is. I yeah. don't know how much they're charging. I don't know if they have the little card thing anymore, but I'm like, it's not ever going to be as big as it was. No, but I hope it does well. Cause mm. Stacy seemed like a good guy. Sure. And you don't seem so high up there to where you wouldn't grace us with your presence. So I might try to see about uh, tweeting at you or, or Instagramming. But I would love to get with you about what you're doing now with the company and what you're plan. And, you know, obviously we're not going to we don't want your personal information. We don't want, mm. you know, we, we, we don't want your financials. I don't want to see your credit score. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to do all that. I just want to know, like, what's your what's your mindset for movie pass now? Because I'd say I'm pretty well invested in it now mm -hmm. mentally with, like, I want to see where this goes in this company. I looked up what it costs to invest in the company. It's a minimum, for a minimum stake in the company is, like, $2,500. Mm -hmm. um, sounds pretty reasonable. Like, and they have other tiers if you want to put some bigger money into it. Yeah. But I, I would love to know from your perspective, like, what's MoviePass now going mm -hmm. forward? Yeah. I saw the documentary. I was there when it was when it blew up, and I was watching it. I was watching Mitch Lowe run his mouth and be stupid. Yeah, uh, and I'm glad it's back in your hands. And I really do wish your company well. But I would really love to see what it's doing now, mm. what the plan is, the steps going forward. What do you know now that you didn't know before that you're willing to implement, like yeah. that stuff like that? I'd love to get your perspective on it. Like you know, you're, you seem like a good guy. Um, you know, you should read his book then. Yeah, I might. I might do that. You know, I, I like I like reading more about you. So I'd love to. Uh, you know, it'd be really cool if he could message us and just give us a brief summary or if he's like, hey, hop on Zoom and we'll talk mm -hmm. about it. That'd be great. I'd love that. That'd be really cool. So anyway, I think that's a good, what do you think? Good stopping point? Did yeah. we cover the documentary okay? Yeah, I think so. All right, cool. Guys, thanks for joining us. Thanks for talking about my medical history, my Pizza Hut endeavors, mm -hmm. and uh, my most recent documentary search history. Do you have the <laughs> card still? Somewhere. Oh, uh, okay. Because because it's going for like fifteen hundred bucks right yeah. on eBay. I was like, what? So I was like looking. I went through my old desk. Like, where are you at? Where are you at? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it was a really nice looking card. It's yeah. all shiny. The the numbers are like silver. Mm. You know, so it's pretty red. cool. Yeah. yeah, very red. The movie pass logo, very very clean. Mm. So um, yeah, pretty cool. Guys, thanks for joining us this week. I think we will see y'all next time. And we got one more episode to shoot. After that, I will be married. You'll see a ring. It's gonna look weird. Mm, I'll feel different. Tough. Yeah, I'll be able to join the Green Lantern Corps. Nah. So, anyway, guys, thanks for joining us. The background will be different too because we'll be in a different studio, but we will see you next time. It'll be the same personalities. See you later, guys. Goodbye.